Hello, and welcome to the Rotary Club of Broadbrook, Connecticut's Service Above Self. I'm Ann Osborne. Rotary International is a worldwide organization of over 1.2 million volunteers that provide humanitarian service, encourage high ethical standards in all vocations, and help build goodwill and peace to the world. This time on Service Above Self, we will be watching stories from the Rotarian Video Magazine. The Rotarian Video Magazine highlights just a few of the ways that Rotarians have touched the lives of people in our own communities as well as those around the world. In our first story, we will look at how Rotary International has continued the battle against polio in northern India, which continues to see new cases of polio every year. The Rotary Foundation's matching grant program and other generous Rotarian contributions have made it possible for 550 children to receive polio corrective surgery and rehabilitation at St. Stephen's Hospital in New Delhi. Let's watch as Dr. Matthew Vargas, Director of the Department of Orthopedics at St. Stephen's Hospital, treats 12-year-old patient Mohammed Asif. In the north of India, Rotarians continue their battle against polio. Nini. Here, as in the south, a key component in their efforts is vocational education for polio survivors. But unlike southern India, the north has new polio cases every year. And a large backlog of patients require surgery and rehabilitation. Many are treated at St. Stephen's Hospital. There's a huge number out there who are having problems because of the paralytic poliomyelitis, who have deformities, who need surgical intervention, who need calipers. It'll take at least two decades before the thing goes down. One such patient is 12-year-old Mohammed Asif. He can walk, but only if he uses his hand to steady his left leg. As an infant, Asif was not immunized against polio. Dr. Verghese can't perform miracles, but he and his team have an aggressive treatment policy. If the child is crawling, can you get them to sit? If the child is sitting, can you get them to stand? If the child is standing, can you get them to walk? And the whole idea is to get the child as independent as possible. And I think we've got everything that is required for that. On an October morning, mother and son prepare for what lies ahead. And soon, Asif is wheeled into surgery. Dr. Verghi's strategy for straightening the boy's leg involves operations on his hip, knee, and lower leg. After hours of surgery, a stabilizing pin is inserted and a cast is applied. It's been a grueling day, but Asif's prognosis is excellent. Now his leg must be given a chance to heal. A month later, Asif's father brings his son back to St. Stephen's. A technician removes the cast and the pin. Next, Asif visits the hospital's artificial limb center. Another cast is applied, and the healing continues. Six weeks after his surgery, Asif's second cast is removed.
His leg has healed well. And he tries on the calipers. He rests for a moment, thinking about where he's been and where he's going. Then, slowly, hesitantly, Asif takes the first steps of his new life. In our next story, you will experience the Rotary spirit as members of the Rotary Club of Poway, California, pull together as a community and help their neighbors in a time of need. While victims of the fierce wildfires that ravaged the San Diego area in 2007 assess the damage to their properties and lives, Rotarians from the local club stepped up by volunteering their time, money, and other resources for their neighbors, some of whom were Rotarians themselves. The fire swung over those mountains here, came down through the Blue Sky Reserve and then around Poway Lake and it started to come up the valley here. The whole roof was rumbling because the wind was getting under the tiles. It was like an earthquake. And so the, the Rotary Club has really come through for us yeah. in a big time way. And we're really grateful to them. At that point in your life, anything helps. Because we have seven kids. Oh, thank you so much, <laughs> all of you. Thank you so much, Bob. I open the envelope and there's a check for several hundred dollars for each one of us families from Rotary and the city of Poway. Here I was a Rotarian, Paul Harris Fellow. The wheelchair certificates are all right there. Now, I've seen Rotary from both sides of that coin. For years, I was the giver and the doer, and now being victimized by a wildfire, I'm the beneficiary. <sighs> because even in Rotary, we hear so little of the incredible number of local events the clubs do all over the country. And here they are saying, hey, you count too. Just like you can't measure the sorrow, you can't measure the gratitude. Rotary really, really came forth and, and, and did a wonderful, wonderful job of helping us out. And we were able to buy things that we needed at the moment. We did leave without anything. We had no clothes. We had, we had nothing. And, um, and we're really appreciative of them. And they continue to give us assistance. It's all good. I mean, it's, it, it was sad that it happened, but it's, uh, it, it brought us a little closer together and a better understanding about life. And sometimes it takes all your life to earn it, you know, and it goes. So you replace it slowly and move on and appreciate you're still alive in this world. That's where I grew up. This is not like, um, you're, not, you're not dealing with just like property. Like, this is my, my life. Losing it all was really hard for me. And really, it was twice as hard for my dad. He truly worked all his life for it. And it was just really hard. Rotarians have been a part of the fiber of my life for over a decade. It was not surprising they were with me every step of the fire. Rotarians were on the lot helping us find a few items, each of them wearing masks and gloves, and often sitting in the ash as they sifted for memorabilia. 
As we backed out of the driveway here, we looked to the left down the hill and there was our neighbor's house fully engulfed in flames. I mean, one of our friends, look, Gordy from Rotary, we have stayed at their house. We have eaten meal, meal after meal at their house. I mean, they've just been there. You know, it's just done nothing but draw us closer together. I've been a Rotarian for probably 12 years now, I guess. And then last fall, I decided I was going to drop out. And right after I'd done that, the fires hit and my house was one of the ones that was destroyed. We lost everything. We got out with absolutely nothing. Right after the fires, I got calls and letters and notes and just so much communication from people at Rotary. They asked if they could come over and help clean up the lot. And in talking to some of the people, I just realized I'd made a mistake and it was too important to me. It still is. So I rejoined, and I will never drop out, ever. I'll be a Rotarian forever. In our next clip, we will see how the cooperation between three separate Rotary clubs in Jacksonville, Florida, Tama, Ghana, and Monrovia, Liberia, helped Mercy ships launch the African Mercy. At the time of this clip, the African Mercy was stationed in Liberia and was providing free medical care to the underserved. In addition to highlighting the cooperation between the three Rotary Clubs, it also discusses how Rotary came to be involved with Mercy ships. Integral to the success of these groups was the Rotary Foundation Humanitarian Grant which matched the funds of the Jacksonville Rotary Club, allowing them to donate $1 million to Mercy Ships. We've got our tickets, and you know, I really do need to check and see what time we leave here on Sunday, because we really don't want to miss that first plane. Hey. We've got our, got our passports here, and it has to be good for at least a year after you travel, and ours are really good until 2011, so uh, we're good to go with our passports, and Mercy Ships is taking care of getting our visas for us. My name's Sharon Woodbury, and I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, it's where I live now with my husband, Benson. <laughs> I'm a Rotary partner. My husband is a Rotarian, and my job is to support him in that endeavor. Are you going to wear this hat? I am. I'm going to wear this hat so that I look like a real person on safari. And when I put my sunglasses on, they are just going to be wowed. They are going to be wowed. I had uh, been a commercial banker for 21 years and decided that there surely was more to life than that. And my husband and I, took off in a travel trailer and we spent a month on the East Coast. Well, we went on up into Canada and spent about three months just traveling across Canada and spent a month backpacking the inside passages of Alaska when lo and behold they had the Valdez oil spill. So we went to Valdez and worked there for about seven months and every Friday they would send a chopper to get me because they had uh, some kind of concern that they wouldn't be able to get the payroll out. We had uh, 2,500 employees and over 100 work sites, and we were doing everything by pencil and paper. That was one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever had. Hers? My involvement in Mercy Ships actually started several years ago when I went to work for Mr. Charlie Towers. He is on the International Board of Mercy Ship. So I had been involved with him in a variety of different projects. We went out and began calling on people to raise some funds for the newest Mercy Ship, the Africa Mercy. And that was in January of 06. And shortly thereafter, you went to work for Mercy Ships, Benson. Yeah. My involvement began when I heard Don Stevens speak at the Rotary Club about Mercy Ships and what they did and how they did it and why they did it. 
Uh, I was so impressed that I went up to Don after the, after the Rotary Club meeting and told him that I didn't know what I was going to do for Mercy Ships, but I was going to work for Mercy Ships. I somehow ended up at this Rotary meeting where our current district foundation chairman, Tommy Grimes, was there and uh, Dave Harrell, our prior uh, district grant chairman, was there. And they passed some papers over to me and they had a little bit of handwritten stuff on the front page and they said, Sharon, I, you could do this, it's just a piece of cake if you would just help us do this. Now at that point, we didn't really have any experience in grant writing or establishing international partners. But in talking with the Rotary Foundation, um, they suggested that we go instead with a partner that would actually benefit from the services that the ship provided, which would then be a country in West Africa. The Rotary Foundation is today one of the largest charitable organizations in the United States. So it's a means by which Rotarians are able to do good in the world. The matching grant highlighted in this particular story is but one example of how the Rotary Foundation can work collaboratively with reputable organizations to address urgent human needs. I'm involved because I want to make a difference. My name is Don Stevens, and I am the founder and president of Mercy Ships. The Africa Mercy is an incredible hospital ship. It's 500 feet long, standing on the propellers. It's as tall as a 50-story skyscraper. The lower deck that used to be a train deck is now a purpose-built hospital six operating rooms, CAT scan, lab. Mercy Ships would be an example of what we call cooperating organizations. How to partner with the foundation with Rotary in the U.S. The grant was made to a partnership between Rotary Clubs. It allows the Rotary Clubs involved to leverage this resource and partner with a reputable organization that has expertise in a particular area. The half a million dollar donation from the Rotary Club in Jacksonville and the fact that it was matched by Rotary Foundation provided Land Rovers, medical equipment, the ancillary equipment that we have needed to serve the direct beneficiaries in the coast of Africa. I'm here to recognize and, and thank Rotarians for that. In addition, one of the interesting discoveries that I've had over a number of years now with Rotary is that local clubs can and are encouraged to adopt their own programs. One of the real strengths of the matching grant program is that there is a partnership form between two clubs in two different countries. In this case, a club in the United States is partnered with a club in Africa. We began writing the grants, and that actually was a process that involved three different groups, our Rotary Club here, the Rotary Club of Tema, and also our cooperating agency, Mercy Ships. And we would collaborate sometimes in telephone conference calls, and we often would call the Rotary Foundation and get them in on the conference calls to be sure that we were all on the same page. The club in the United States has the financial resources whereas the club in Africa is going to be charged with the responsibility of implementing the project. They have the local expertise required to successfully implement the project. It's, it's a matter of coordination. It's a matter of, a matter of technology in a lot of cases. Faxing is quite difficult from time to time. Computer skill levels are different. It was a process of getting that done and sometimes you know, you take a step and then you wait and other people are doing their part and you wait and then you call and follow up and, you know, get the papers in and, you know, put your head down on your desk and say, oh, please let it come today and you know that this is the deadline and you have to get it. Those are the types of frustrations in dealing with a foreign country. But the intent, the motive, the, uh, the commitment, it's all the same. The fact that the members of the club in Africa, the members of the club in the United States, all belong to the larger organization, Rotary International, there's inherent trust in this partnership. 
many of you know, Rotary is all about service above self. And if anybody's worked on the uh, Mercy ships, realize that there is one individual who has been our driving force from the word go. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Jacksonville, I'd like to present the Paul Harris Award. Not too long ago, the Rotary Foundation celebrated a historic milestone of one million Paul Harris Fellows around the world. That recognition is extremely important to Rotarians. Of course, named after the founder of the organization, Paul Harris, Rotarians place great emphasis on being Paul Harris Fellows, on recognizing their friends, loved ones, colleagues as Paul Harris Fellows. You know, we've been through some valleys and hills to make this happen, but the thing to remember is that it can happen, it will happen, you just have to be persistent, and if you keep asking, they get tired of hearing from you and they give you what you want. <laughs> My job was to prepare large applications to be completed and submitted, also to coordinate all of the travel arrangements and also the arrangements to go to the Africa Mercy as soon as she got to West Africa. And as a result of that, they decided that Benson and I could go to represent the local Rotary Club. That's when the fun began. <laughs> One of the things that we're hoping to accomplish while we're there is to not only cement our relationship with our Rotary Club in Kema, but we're also involving the Rotary Club in Monrovia, who's going to host all of us at one of their Rotary meetings, and they will come aboard the ship with us as well. Tour of the ship. Well, it's part of uh, Rotary Foundation's requirement that when you make a contribution, that you make sure that it's being properly used. We gave some funding for certain equipment, and uh, by Rotary Foundation requirements, we are supposed to come and make sure that these monies have been spent for what they were meant for. Alex Yaira Fiago, I'm a past president and, uh, and a Paul Harris fellow. As a Rotarian and uh, as a facilitator of some of the grants that have been made available to the African Mercy, I feel very proud. The reason we selected Liberia is in the Human Development Index of Nations published annually by the United Nations. Liberia and Sierra Leone don't even rank on that index of nations because there's not enough infrastructure to measure. They've had 15 years of civil war, each of the countries, and so everything is destroyed. It's a key time for us to be there. As a Ghanaian, of course, I would have loved to have had the African Messi serve in Ghana. But wherever the service is provided, once it's to humanity. Water. So essential. Is it a Initially, it was a bit difficult convincing us, especially in my Rotary Club, to get on board with the Jacksonville Club to set up the grant. But when we had an exposure to what Messi Ships was doing, there was no turning back. The Jacksonville Rotarians, we've talked on the phone, we've emailed each other and, and all that, but we've never met. So this is great, meeting Sharon and uh, Benson for the first time, you know, and sharing fellowship. Now when, he, you know, she calls or he calls, I can put a face to the voice. The first morning after we got there, um, our Tim up partners had also arrived the evening before, but we hadn't met them because it was pretty late in the evening as we were all getting in and going, getting to our cabins. So we met them the next morning and the first thing that happened was that they were just amazed that I could call them each one by name and that I knew who was who, but I hadn't told them that I'd seen a picture that had two of them in it, so it wasn't hard to figure out who the third one was. Um, but on that day, uh, that very first day, I think we all were a little overwhelmed by all of the things that we were seeing as they took us on a full tour of the ship and we had the opportunity too to inspect the equipment that we purchased and those sorts of things. But I know uh, when I got downstairs in the hospital ward, um, there was a big brass plaque on the wall and it said, the people of Jacksonville, Florida and Charlie and Katie Towers. And somehow when I put my hand on that plaque, I began to weep because 
I thought of how busy we get and we complain and we whine and all these things. But here I'm seeing all these people that are being helped and I thought every minute of it was worth it. Every little, every little thing we had to do, every phone call, every second phone call, every form that had to be filled out, all the, all the processes we went through to get to this place was worth every bit of the effort. You know, in our parts of the world, poverty is very prevalent. And more so if you happen to be disadvantaged, if you are handicapped, most people are abandoned by their families. Any opportunity to provide any relief provides a free hand. The person who would have normally been shepherding a blind person around to beg or that kind of thing becomes free if the services like Mercy Ships is provided. Our common objective is to be of service to our fellow man. And the things that happen in our world, like the Valdez oil spill, or the opportunity with mercy ships. We can't think of any better way to spend our lives than doing those kinds of things. The relationships with those clubs, they have the same motto, the same credo. They believe the same way that the Jacksonville Rotary believes, service above self. And they're looking to be of service to their fellow man, just like we are. And I'm thankful for mercy ships and the uh, the Jacksonville Rotary Club for bringing us the Rotary Club of Tema in. This exposure has deepened our understanding of what service to mankind is. Thank you for watching the Rotarian Video Magazine on Service Above Self. For all of us here at Service Above Self, I'm Ann Osborne, reminding you to go out, find a worthy cause, and lend a helping hand in your community. We'll see you next time.